Hello everyone, thanks for tuning in and welcome to a brand new poker experience. And this poker experience is going to be unique. What's different about this poker experience? Uh, it's not coming to you from Las Vegas. It's not uh, coming to you from Atlantic City. Yeah, we're, we're not in San Juan. And we're not down in Costa Rica or on a big cruise ship. You know where we're at? We're in Muskegon, Michigan, in your own backyard. That's what's great about this poker experience. Taped live at Great Lakes Down, Muskegon, Michigan, in your own backyard. So sit down, stay tuned, and get ready for some poker action. If the dealers are ready, looks like the dealers are ready. We're starting at 25-25. Good luck to everybody. Shuffle up and deal. Exactly. Brian, you need a little less McDonald's, a little more lean chicken. This is, uh, remember, Brian Harris here that uh, is part of our poker show. That's right. And uh, we have Lou Harris sitting here, Brian's mother. Now, Brian, uh, record shows that she's actually got into the money more than you have up here. Uh, she teaching you? Uh, are you teaching her? What's the story? Well, I got to watch what I say. We do still spend Thanksgivings and Christmases together. <laughs> She plays a little more than I do. I end up working quite a bit, uh, helping the charities out. But uh, she's definitely come along. Uh, she's far better off here than she is at some casino pulling on the slot machine. And uh, she really likes to gamble. I, that's where I got the gambling bug from. And I'm glad to see her here. She's taken down three trophies in the past, since January, I guess. And I have a grand total of, let me, <laughs> I need to use my, take my socks off to count them. Oh, that's right, I have none. I have none, so well, I guess for now she's the uh, queen of the family. Yeah, well, let's check in with Lou and see how Brian's mother is doing. We've, I've been hanging out with your son all day, as you know. Yes, I know that. Yep, and we understand that you're going to have to start teaching him to play. You, uh, you've been in the money, and you have some trophies, and we've added up what he's got, and uh, it didn't take a lot of paper, let's just say. But, you know, he plays well, <laughs> but he, uh, he had me read books before I started playing Hold'em. I had never played it before, and he had me read a lot of books, and he did teach me a lot of things. I play a little bit looser than Brian does, but sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. But he has helped me tremendously because he has given me books to read and has given me many pointers on the game. And if I take him down three trophies, it's because of what he has taught me. He's a pretty good son. Well, I think that's well spoken like a mother would speak. I don't, <laughs> I'm not really sure who's teaching who, but we'll find out. Brian, I just wanted her to know that I am proud of her, so I had to put on my wardrobe. I had it made up special for her, uh, the first tournament that she won. If you can't read it very good, it says, My mother won a poker tournament, and all I got was this lousy T-shirt. So. But he has to change it to three tournaments yeah. now instead of just one. And I have to cross out the A and put a three. <laughs> just poking a little fun. I wore it uh, the, the weekend after she won the tournament, and most of the people know her. In fact, she's got about 30 or 40 children that play because everybody calls her mom. So. 
I'm proud of her, and I hope she wins today. It'd be great for the show. Right. How we doing, Chad? Chad, uh, looking yeah. about half stacked there. Yeah, the cards are growing kind of cold. Do you think we might need to change the shirt? That's the only it question might be I the got shirt. asked. I, yeah. you know, it might be the shirt. <laughs> it worked for you earlier. It did. You know, my luck's kind of ran out. I uh, probably haven't saw a face card in the last 20 hands, to be honest with you. Um, yeah. You know, I finally get an ace with a small card or something. Somebody raises it up. You know, cards I'd like to see a flop with, but you know, it's, yep. uh, it's, it's tough. How you know, about the little yellow man? Is he bringing you any luck, and what's the significance of that card protector? Oh, that card protector, I got that when uh, actually I was in a competition for the uh, State Hazardous Materials competition up in Traverse City. And uh, we got that as part of our winnings. Uh, the Muskegon team won first place. So I thought he'd be bringing me some luck today, but I'm starting to think he's going to go back in the pocket there, and uh, <laughs> I'm just going to go out on my own. So Now, we know you got to get back and sit down, but um, we don't want to give away any of your real secrets, but what's your strategy at this point, being low chip stack and uh, knowing that the blinds are going up? Well, you know, you just got to pick your spot. Pick your spot to make the right move, and... Uh, to be honest with you, I haven't saw an ace in a long time, so I'm afraid if I see an ace, I might have to push right there. Well, Chad, we know you got to get back there, so get over there and wake that little man in the suit right, up, and good luck right. to you. Thanks. We'll check good in luck. on you later. Good luck, Chad. We got Chad sitting back down. He's got uh, 300 in the blind. Next hand, the blinds are going to be going to 400 and 800. 400 and 800 in the next blinds. Apparently, the cards were no good again. Hello everyone, we've uh, plucked out one of the charity dealers today, uh, Bruce maybe is with us, and we're going to ask him a few questions of how he got started and what goes on at the track here. Uh, first question, Bruce, is uh, how long have you been doing this? Uh, I've been doing this for about a year and a half. Now. A year and a half, yeah. yeah. How long have you been? Just about every weekend for a year sure. and a half. Sure. How long have they been on the track here? Uh, we've been on the track since uh, last November. Prior to that, we were on site in uh, some, of the, some of the various... All right, I remember Dreamers and the Alps yep. and uh, Bully Shoon. Uh, how did you get involved in, in dealing poker on such a regular basis? Well, I belonged to some of the organizations and uh, volunteered my time to uh, come out and help the organization and then I got semi good at it and uh, uh, was invited by other organizations to uh, help them out too right uh, which is which is fun this, this is fun for me right did you have some poker knowledge when you started doing this oh yeah I, I played poker my father taught me how to play poker when I was about nine oh, okay he right. would uh, he would give us our allowance and uh, we we play for our allowance so. <laughs> That's, I how, lost, a of, that's I how a lot of us grew up, that's for sure, that's for sure. <laughs> so, do you play poker now with these uh, type of events? Well, no, I don't, I don't play poker anymore. Uh, because my, uh, my uncle had told me that there was no such thing as a bad beat in poker. So, bad so, beat? Well, yeah, you know, a bad beat where you, the hand is very close and you're you're like leading into the last card and the last right, card. Right, I know, I know, I know. But uh, so why did you quit poker? Too many bad beats. <laughs> okay. Hey, so, you got any questions for Bruce? Yeah, Bruce. I was kind of curious, being the uh, being that you're here on such a regular basis. Um, you know, you've dealt uh, probably a tremendous amount of hands, wouldn't you say? Uh, yeah. I would say, yeah. yeah. Well, I was kind of curious. Do you have any, uh, you know, any interesting stories? Has there been a lot of action in any particular hands that stick out with you that you could share with us that would be entertaining? I do know at one time when one of our tournaments had come down to a heads up where the two two players were playing against each other. Okay. Uh, one of the players I gave four jacks to, so he had four jacks. Oh, that's after. a great hand. But. Pretty darn good, hard to beat that. Yes, it is. In the same hand, I gave the guy four kings. The other guy? The other guy. Oh, four man. Kings. To end the tournament. That ended the tournament. The guy with four jacks, of course, went all in. And the guy with four kings, of course, beat Yeah. And you're still with us, Bruce? That's yeah. I, I, made, I still, to this day, kind of watch my back when I'm going down the stairs to the parking lot. Watch out for that guy. <laughs> he probably won't forget that one. Uh, another, qu another question I had for you, Bruce. You've watched these people develop over the past year and a half, you say. And you understand the tournaments, tournament strategies. Do you think people are getting better by coming out here? Oh, I, I think they are getting much better. In fact, I honestly uh, believe that there are 
about 10 to 15 of our regular players here who could go and not necessarily make a living on the tour, but <laughs> he likes Speaking to of big he likes to, yes, no, he likes to I, think I, that. I won't well, mention to him that I, I did yeah. take seventh in the Heartland Poker yeah. Tour, <laughs> which was a tough. That's, that's another which story a, for another which day. Is a tough <laughs> tournament, but it's Midwest, so you can go from there. Right, um, it's true because um, I know a lot of the regular pokers. Dave and I play all the time out here, and uh, we know that uh, we've had regular placers in the tournaments in Manistee and the tournaments down in uh, East right. uh, Chicago, uh, all legal casinos. And the tournaments up in Traverse City, and uh, lots of people striving. Uh, we had some guys go off to the World Series and win their way into some events. And, right. uh, and I feel the same way. Definitely, everybody's yeah. getting better, and, and this is like a, oh, a, this a proving is, ground right. uh, and a learning ground. Isn't as, it? as as good as the books are that you can buy on poker, and there are many, many very good books. This really teaches you more about poker than any of the books because you you're against a live person you see even even when you play online it's not the same thing playing online is much much different than playing oh, live absolutely uh, looking into their looking eyes looking into their eyes trying, trying to get a tell game. on them and one of the reasons why I don't play is because it's I think it's kind of an unfair advantage because I know a lot of people's tells. And I don't think that that would be fair. He knows people's tells. Yes. Well, I'll we're going to have to talk off around. camera about that. <laughs> well, I'll tell you my own strategy. It's not reading books. It's not online. I just keep these all the time. I understand it's a reasonably good start. Sometimes I got the wrong color, but, you know, I get away with it. Brian has more than aces up his sleeve sometimes, Bruce. <laughs> you know, Bruce, uh, talking about how good the people are here, I did want to ask you one thing, and that is, uh, with the people that are getting started or want to learn more about poker, you know, some of them might feel intimidating walking into this room and, and that there's these good players and all this. You know, um, you know, is there a certain amount of luck involved? And does somebody really have a chance when they come down if they're not a really skilled player? Can they still hold their own here? Oh, certainly, certainly. Uh, the pros calculate that there's anything from 12 to 18% luck on every hand. Pros acknowledge the luck factor. And even when you come down here, a person may feel intimidated until he sits down at the table with the people that he's playing against. This, this group of people that come down here, our regulars and people that just occasionally come in, are some of the best people that I know that you can learn how to play poker from. They're very friendly. Uh, it, same thing happened when I started dealing. I was flustered, didn't, scared and all this, but the people made me comfortable. And that's why this place is very good, because it makes you very, very comfortable. And when you're in a comfortable environment like that, you can, you can learn and you can also play at, without being intimidated. I mean, there are people that are, though this isn't a World Series, they're not spending $10,000 to get in. Still, money is money, and they, they play for blood. Thank you. You're going to find those kind of people. Uh, it doesn't matter what card room you go into, you're going to find those people. But here, you still have many, many people who will help you develop your game. And that's the important thing. Once your game starts to develop, and you see how well you start to play against good players, then you know, then you're a good player, and this is not intimidating. I, I think, because I send a lot of people out here that are beginners or have just learned a little bit, but I definitely think it's nice to come out here and learn the form. If you haven't been in a casino, it's very intimidating the first time you go into a poker room. Right? I'm sure Dave agrees with that. Yes, And you is. take somebody with you, a relative or a friend, they, they've seen it on TV, they want to give it a try, they get in there and they're flustered. What's a blind? What's a button? Uh, what do you mean? What's all in? Can I go all in? Well, you're playing a limit game, sir. All these rules. But when they come down here, uh, the charities strive to be just as professional as the casinos. You can see the equipment we're using. Yeah, but uh, we've had everything happen down here over these weekends, and we've learned every mistake that can be made. And it's very professional, right down to what happens when there's a missed deal or a pre-exposed card uh, and all that stuff. So, I mean, that is a big part. If people can come down here, and I'm sure you got to agree with me, and they can learn that this right. is the proper format and this is how it's done. I, I believe this is the best place to learn. I oh, downloaded yes. the, uh, the rules <laughs> of uh, uh, World Poker Rules of just Texas Hold'em and they ran to 34 pages of very tiny script. So there are a lot of rules but once you find out the dealers here, myself and you, will help you and explain to you as we go along so that you can get an idea of what's going on. 
after you play one or two uh, satellites, then I think you're ready to try the tournament because it's a it's it's a fun thing. Plus, it's five hundred dollars sure. for a prize. And there's something else that just came to mind. Uh, the dealers aren't furnished out here. Everybody at home that hasn't come out here uh, might be intimidated. I don't even know how to deal the game. I'm not a good shuffler. What's a cut card? Uh, I think the people need to know when they come out here. There's a lot of guys like Bruce that enjoy doing it. The charities are offered training when they when they do the game. Right. So you're not going to have to deal your own cards for the people that are out there. A guy like Bruce is going to maintain the game. He's a manager. He's a table manager, just like every dealer is. And, and they're going to tell you what's right. What's wrong, and they know it because they've done it thousands and thousands of times. So basically, in a summary, it's uh, the way it seems here is that somebody could come down, whether they have little experience, which a lot of people do, mm -hmm. and it's a very inviting, a very inviting environment, and they're going to be shown the basic things that they need to do right. in case it wasn't in a book or it wasn't right. online. Explained. Right. You will help them as a dealer. The other dealers will, and it sounds like the charity is really offering to help these people, right. and that they can really get in for some lower stakes. They don't have to worry about gambling a tremendous amount of money oh, yeah, we just have to see lower, if they like it. Yeah, we have lower stake uh, uh, live games, which might be a good, a good training place before you step up to the tournaments. Because yeah. uh, it sounds like the tournaments and some of the higher stakes games will also accommodate the players out there who might have some more experience. Yes. So pretty much here at the track, it, it sounds like that whether you're just starting, uh, you're trying to learn, or you are you have learned a lot and you're very experienced, and in, in either case you can come down here and have a good time. Yeah, this is this is one, one place where you can come down, it doesn't matter what class of player you are or what you think you are, you'll find competition down here to match your class. And, and better so that you can improve yourself. There's always room for improvement for a player, and this is the perfect place to come down and, and, and learn the game properly. Great. Enough about everybody else, Chris. Not to put you on the spot, but between Dave and I, who do you think's the better poker player? Now, Bruce, you know the answer to that. This is Dave. This is Ryan. We know what the answer is, Bruce. We won't put you on the spot. You Thanks did. for talking to us today. <laughs> and we'll see you at the final table. Remember, now that we got you on TV, we're at the final table. Put cards first. I'll deal, I'll deal out of the middle of the deck if I have to. <laughs> we'll keep that under wraps. Thanks a lot, Bruce. All right, David. <laughs> different charities uh, do different things for the players while they're playing poker, and one of the things the FOP has decided to do is they bring extra gifts in uh, for any players that participate in the tournaments or even the cash tables. Uh, one added thing they did uh, this weekend was uh, we have this jar of chips here, and People were eligible to guess, any players were eligible to guess how many chips are actually in this container. And they were donated. They were able to win. Nice new World Series of Poker chip set. And for those of you at home, I'd like to get a good look at this chip set and the chips. There were 827 chips that fit in this jar. And we're about to go find the winners. So come on. Uh, Hang on a second. <laughs> Hang on a second. The uh, winner was actually the pit boss, Randy Allen. His guest of 832 was the closest. Oh. Hang on, hang on. Randy, what'd you do before everybody got here? Oh, I filled the he chip decided, jar. <laughs> he decided to donate it back because he is working today, helping out. Uh, so it's going to go to the next closest, which was a guest of 839, which was only 12 away, and that's Jill Black. 800. 827 was the exact amount. 827 was the actual 827. amount. 827. Thanks for participating. World Series of Poker. That was only 50. Yeah. Up. Come on. Courtesy of the FOP. And Randy. And Randy. Thank you, Randy. And Randy. Good job. Winner there with a new yeah. prize. Congratulations. Hi. You know what, Randy? Oh, there you go. Act excited. You gonna go home and play? <laughs> You're not a poker player, are you? Can you do that? Yeah. yeah. Oh, you know what else? Hi, uh, this is Dave Durda back here with Greg Osterhaus. We're going to show you and explain to you how easy it is to get signed up here if you want to come on down to Great Lakes Downs and uh, play some poker like the pros. 
Uh, we have uh, Greg here. We're going to ask him a few questions. So, uh, Greg, when uh, someone comes down here, if they're a little bit new to the game, let's say, uh, what's the first thing that they might want to uh, think about when they come down? Well, the first thing they really want to do is come up to me. I'll be standing by the live action board where I keep track of people who are waiting to play or maybe in a different tournament at the time and want to play later on in the evening. We have many varieties of Texas Hold'em. They're all limit cash games. We have a 3-6, which is a very low stake. Get 30 bucks, come on down here. You can, it's an easy lesson. You know, 30 bucks is, is gas to the casino. You know, so, so somebody could come down here potentially with $30 and walk away a winner. Either walk away a winner or be able to play for four or five hours, get a real good feel for how it's played down here, you know, and you know, see if this is something for, that they want to do more often or not. So a lot of people come down here, you're saying, not just to win money, but it's just entertainment and fun. Yeah, you know, where else can you go for 30 bucks, play for four or five hours, talk with some guys at the table, and really pick up a good hobby, you know what I mean? Yeah, I know. I, you know, I, I play a little poker, so I, I enjoy it here. Um, now, when you uh, mentioned that there's actually uh, tournaments, is there tournaments every day, or, or how does that work? Because I know... Probably due to all the uh, other TV shows out there, <laughs> most people are going to be familiar with tournaments. Yeah, uh, Thursdays and Fridays are basically our live action cash games and uh, one table tournaments. Our main tournaments are on Thursday or Saturdays at five o'clock and nine o'clock, and Sundays at three and seven. Two hours before each tournament, we're running fifteen dollar lightning satellites, which if you get first place, you get a free entry into the main event. So really, you could technically spend fifteen dollars and have a chance to win five hundred dollars later in the evening. I got you. So basically someone could come down here on a Thursday or a Friday and they could sit down with seven people and that's just a whole tournament in itself. Right, it's a, so it gets you a good real feel for the tournament style which is much different than live action. So, you know, $55, seven players, it's a two hour time limit. So, you know, it's just a real short, brief intro to the tournament play. Wow, that's great. So people who like to play tournaments could come down. $55, seven people, spend a couple hours, enjoy themselves, and possibly walk away with some cash. First place is 200 All you got to do is beat six people. That sounds great. That's a good deal. Yes, it is. Now, the larger tournaments for people that would like to play with more people, um, about how many people would be in your larger tournaments, like on a Saturday, for instance? Saturday, we're averaging between, or the charity is averaging between 60 and 80 people for the first game, and I'm between 50 and 70 for the second game. Usually pays out between 10 and 15 places, so it's not like you have to finish first. You know, I think 14th place usually gets their money back, so you know they can sit here for four hours and just come up some way dead even, but pick up a lot of experience. Wow! And what is first place for one of the larger tournaments? That's 500 dollars. So someone could come down here with 55 dollars, spend four or five four or five hours, six hours. Enjoy themselves and possibly walk away with five hundred dollars cash. Well, technically, it could only cost them fifteen dollars if they play in a lightning satellite beforehand. They win the lightning satellite, get fifty-five dollars. All of a sudden, they're in the tournament, for pretty much you know free, and then right. later on, they can walk out with five hundred. So let's talk about that. The lightning satellites, them are only run on the the Saturday and Sunday when you have the larger tournaments. Yeah, the whole point of the lightning satellite is to get into a main event for less money. Yeah, yeah. So you could put fifteen dollars play against seven people, six yep. other people, yep. if you win that, your your entry is paid for the main event, basically, or for the larger tournament. Wow, that sounds like a great time. It's easy. Cool. Now, also, I noticed uh, you have a seven-card stud. Seven-card um, stud, it's a 1 to 25 spread limit, which means at any time you can bet or raise from anywhere from 1 to 25 dollars. And that seven-card stud, just like uh, maybe before all the uh, Texas Hold'em hoopla. Yeah, I mean, well, you still see the uh, circuit event on the World Series of Poker, that, you know, it's still a popular game. Uh, it's not for everybody. There's a certain taste that certain people have for the game. Don't recommend starting out on that game necessarily. Once you get a feel for Hold'em and the basis of poker, I'd say sit there and watch it a few times to see if it's something that you're going to like. Great, great. So there's a variety of games. You can sit in the cash games, in a sense. You can sit and leave when you want. You know, you can sit down with 30 bucks, stay for five minutes, all of a sudden, and walk out $100 ahead. You know, it's kind of frowned upon by some players, but it's by, by all means, it's legal. Okay, so you could come and sit down, leave when you want on the what you call live action games, or you could get yourself into a tournament where you have a set amount of chips, just like you see on TV, and you... you can walk away a winner, or you can just have a lot of fun and cheap entertainment. Great, that sounds awesome. Hey, thank you for the information, no Greg. Problem. I appreciate it. Yep. We're at the final table of the first event that's just wrapping up. We're heads up between Adam and Miguel. 
And Adams went all in with a Jack 8 offsuit. And Miguel made a quick call with a King 10 of spades. Our dealer, Bruce, is going to put the flop out here and see what happens. Ace, five, deuce, no help for Adam. Miguel has him covered. If Miguel wins the hand, Adam will be eliminated. Miguel will be pronounced the winner, the cash, and the trophy. Queen of spades on the river, and that's it for the first tournament. Miguel takes first. Adam takes second. Get a shot of Miguel with the trophy. Thank you, Bruce. Thank you. Bruce the dealer. Oh, Good job, Miguel. <laughs> Let's the trophy. Let Thanks the trophy. Sicken. Woo! The sicken. I got a sicken. He's second uh, the first place on the first uh, best game. Thank you. Wow. Hi, we're here with our runner-up to the first main event tournament for the FOP on Sunday. And what's your name, sir? Adam Furman. Adam Furman. So uh, why don't you give us a little bit of uh, uh, strategy advice. How did you get as far as you did in the tournament? And uh, what happened at the end there? What situation did you end up in where you ended up second place as opposed to taking the trophy home? Well, you know, when it got down to the last five people, we all had about the same amount of chips except for two people. And I had to go all in and the last four. And I got lucky and caught my king. And luckily, I knocked out the uh, two people on that. And the chip leader had me about 10 times mine. So 10 to 1 chip yeah, lead on you? Yeah. yeah. We weren't here for that. That's kind of hard to overcome. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, so I got lucky, and the third place guy got knocked out. And I had to go all in with my jack eight. Hopefully, I had, had two live cards. And he, he beat me at the end, though. And he played well all day. So Great, great. Well, sounds like you really know what you're doing. And there's a reason that you got second. You beat. Um, how many people were in this one? 61. So you beat out 60 other people. Congratulations, yep. you did awesome. Thank you very much, I appreciate it. No and problem. We've got your prize money here. $315 and it was for second place. Today. $315, Adam earns. I'm Thank sure he'll spend much. it wisely. Appreciate it, appreciate it. Congratulations. Thank you. All right. Okay, we talked to Adam. Now we're gonna talk to our first place finisher in the main event from three o'clock, Miguel. Miguel, uh, did you take any bad beats today? Did you give any bad beats today? I'm um, trying any time when I'm playing, I'm trying to play my best hand, so no, any time I got a good look, so this day I'm working very fast, that's week two, so this day I am I'm got my first place. You play, Thank you. You play yeah. solid poker all the time, you're always looking all for time. two good cards. Yeah, I know, so no any time I got a good cards, in the small cards, sometimes win the, every one, so. Sure. Any, any two cards can it's win. My, my look day, thank you. <laughs> okay. Right. Is this your first trophy? It's the second. It's the second, second trophy. trophy. Hold it's that one up good for them so they can see it. Turn it around. It's my second. It's my second. Uh, the, I don't play to, for too much time for personal questions. So when I'm trapped, I'm trapped the, uh, every day, serve more best player. There you go, great. Sure. And Thanks. you beat out a lot of people today. You did a fine job. I, I, we watched I, it two I, I different tried. times. I, yeah, yeah. And Dave's and, got some money Miguel, for you. I know that you like that trophy, but I have a feeling you might want what I have here. This is your first place prize money. Congratulations. So, so this is not nothing. The other one is my chip look. The lucky chip. <laughs> the lucky chip. All right. Thank you. Your lucky day and you had your yeah. lucky chip. Well, good job. Thank Miguel. you. Thank we'll you so much. You. I want to play in one of the tournaments. We have a 7 o'clock tournament. It's a $55 buy-in, and the top prize is $500. Okay, so I just sign, sign in here. Sign your right there. Yeah, let me sign that for you. <laughs> it's 55 Yes. How long? It starts at seven. Yes. What could I? Is there anything going on? What can I do? Do I just hang out, or what can I do in the meantime? Well, we have some lightning satellites going, which are fifteen dollars. Okay. And the first place is fifty-five. Second is twenty. All right. And how long does that? Is that going to be done by the time the other ones? Sure. It lasts about an hour. Okay. I'll sign up for one of these. Two, then. Okay, satellite number 10, we need Keith, Robert, Chad, Scott, Robert P, Eric. 
We're going to leave Chad's satellite and check in where we're heads up in another satellite between uh, Bob and Dan. So let's go see uh, Final Hand coming up shortly. All right, I got a call. I didn't come here to paint. Here we go. I'm all in. He's all in. I better look now. Now, what Bob did was Bob pushed his money in because his chip lead is so substantially large over the competitor that he felt it was uh, mathematically correct to go ahead and throw his money in without even looking at his cards. Plus, I'm not real bright. I got a pull. <laughs> <laughs> Turns out uh, Bob didn't want to gamble after all. No. I'll wait for a better time. This guy's a good dealer, too. I'm going to buy him a burger when we're done. <laughs> Great dealer. Thank you. I'm going to call. Yeah, I'm going to call. You see this could be a big reversal of fortune here. They're both going to flip over their cards, see where they stand. Dominate. It's ace queen against king queen. This hand is a tremendous favorite over this hand. What's he at, 4,500? 44. Bob has uh, more chips than Dan, so if Bob doesn't win this hand, he's still alive. If Dan loses, he'll be out of the tournament, and Bob will be declared All right, the some Take it. You see me leak all my chips away on national TV here. For a heads-up match, this is... Uh, very close. Action should be good. I call. Bob is in the small blind. He decides to call. And Dan checks. We're going to see a flop. Action's on Dan first. He bets 1,200. Bob says no thank you. Dan increases his chip, chip lead slightly. I was doing better before you guys showed up. I guess so. <laughs> yeah, he was. He really was. Ace 10 was working in 
Bob Zolan, Dan Folds. <laughs> I believe it. Yeah. Have me dominate. Have me dominate. Ron Bielski, he's our circuit points champion for the All In Entertainment uh, free roll and first prize. And what we're going to do is uh, ask Ron a few questions about his poker game and just find out exactly how you can be a circuit points champion too. Ron, can you tell the people at home uh, how you achieve that title? Well, the uh, All In Entertainment uh, works with the charities to sponsor tournaments, and our particular tournament was a year long, May of 05 to May of 06, and each event offers circuit points, and the larger the event, the more points you can win, and who's ever got the most points is the grand prize winner. Right, right. And uh, Dave and I have actually participated in some of those also. Uh, do they give you circuit points for the satellites, the sit and goes, the cash games, all of that? Not for the cash games, but for the uh, satellites and the sit and goes and the what they call the main events. Right. Typically Saturdays and Sundays, except for there are some sit and goes during the week too. Okay, Ron, why don't you tell you folks at home uh, what prizes you won for being the circuit champion? Well, because it's a year long tournament, there were a lot of prizes. Uh, got the uh, all-in entertainment polo jersey, uh, all-in entertainment hat. I got this jacket. Wow, that's nice. So that's out in the circuit champ. Circuit champion, 2005-2006, great. And of course, the grand prize was an all-expense uh, paid trip for two to uh, Las Vegas. Uh, we stayed at the Mirage for a week, and we played in the $1,000 satellites trying to qualify for the World Series of Poker which we weren't successful at. <laughs> so so what you're saying is someone that comes down here could win, play charity tournaments, win the circuit event, might get a trip to Las Vegas or some other venue, and we might see them on a bigger TV show taking down some major cash. As a matter of fact, if you watch the World Series of Poker and what's the second segment, when Dan Harrington goes out, you can see me in the background. Wow. <laughs> oh, yeah. I was That's a awesome. spectator. That's there was awesome. also a couple other prizes that were very nice. Uh, this you got a little bling going on there, don't you, yeah. Ron? This uh, bracelet is our uh, No Limit Hold'em Circuit Champion 2005 through 2006. But probably the thing that was the most prestigious was when we give out the seats to the tournaments, they uh, assign them by the tables, and the poker greats have their table names. You know, Howard Letterer and Phil Ivey and who have you. Some of the greatest uh, pros out there. Some of the greatest pros out there. And because I won the circuit championship, they named one of the tables after me. That's so if awesome. you come down here, you can play at the Ron Bielski table. That <laughs> is awesome. Play right well, at the Ron Bielski nice. table. Awesome. <laughs> this is just one of the many satellites. The winner of a satellite does get their entry fee. They win uh, the entry fee to the main event. And Bob looks down. And Dan goes over the top all in. Now Bob is in a situation here where regardless of what his two hole cards are, there's not many hands he could fold due to the mathematical odds of him winning and the amount of money in the pot. He's priced in, as we say, for most hands. And Bob says he's got his favorite hand. Dan shows aces. Bob shows queen nine. Bob's face, frustration. 
Bob is way behind. Bob is probably at least a four to one underdog. And Bob does not want to see clubs. And the turn shows it would be a, uh, he's drawn dead. <laughs> and Bob shows a pair of nines, pair of aces, and pair of aces wins. And Bob is knocked out of the satellite. Congratulations, Dan. Welcome to first place. <laughs> Bob might have to change his favorite hand. Chad might feel like he has to make a move or he might have good cards. We really don't know. And he shows a pair of jacks. Pocket jacks, monster. It might have been a little bit of an overbet there, don't you think, Dave? Um, you know, in this type of uh, tournament, you know, I think every chip counts, but uh, it's hard to tell, Brian, hard to tell. That, been a, that would have been a perfect trap hand, is, is my point. He links yeah. in, gets Bob to raise, he's got him crushed. The only yeah. thing is, if he, the only thing Collie's going to get is Bob's going to have a big hand that could possibly beat him. So I think maybe it was a little bit too much of a raise. Yeah, you know, maybe you're right. I think, I think maybe you are right. Action's back on Chad. Quickly folds and suited three gaffer on Robert. As David said, it's going to be timed out. Still got, uh, I believe, one more round to go. He makes the call. Scott's contemplating. He could simply check and see the flop. He decides to raise a thousand chips. Bob quickly calls. We got some action brewing now. Bob's down to about 1,600. Flop four, five, eight with two clubs and a check check. Queen of Hearts on a turn with a check check. Six of clubs makes it interesting. Possible flush, possible straight. Scott throws out a thousand. Robert can't make the call. Scott flashes an ace and a seven of clubs for a straight on the river, right in the guts. Bob's in desperation flats now with his chip stack. And the king high is going to, no, sixes for Robert. He doubles up, plus picks up Chad's small blind. I think Robert should have 30, 16, 16, 32, 36. You got 36? 36, you should have 36. Chad's gonna raise the pot on the button. Looks like he throws out a 3,600 chip raise. Robert decides to call, it will put him all in. We still have Scott Hodges to act after him. And Robert makes the call, 3,600. Now Scott gets out of the way. Sam's gonna give us a flop. Ace on the flop. Robert's gonna need running, running cards. There's one of his, he needs a 10, and a 10 only to win. And Robert is eliminated. Our man Chad is guaranteed at least second place. Not much uh, Robert could do there. Two big suited cards. Okay, Dave, it's time for someone to make a move. Sam just advised us six and a half minutes left in this round. This is a timed satellite, so they get done uh, in time to play in the main event today. They're trying to win their way in. Uh, cash equivalent, $55 for first, $20 for second. But uh, well, chip stack um, makes a big difference, doesn't it, Dave? Yes, right now with the... With the uh, Right now with the timed event, um, Chad's strategy should be to play really tight. He has him out chipped approximately, approximately two to one. 
And if Chad basically folded all of his blinds, I don't think what's his name? I don't think Scott could catch up to him. But we'll have to see how it plays out. I'm not sure if that's what's on Chad's mind or not. Well, folks, we're going to talk to uh, the, my partner here, Brian Harris, and we're going to find out a little bit more about the charity itself. Because the charity is the reason that we're able to hold the tournaments here at the Great Lakes Downs. That's what makes, uh, gives us the ability to allow players to come in and actually play poker without having to travel distance to go to a, to a live casino. So, Brian, uh, I know that you're actually a member of the FOP, and that is the charity that's sponsoring this event. Um, tell us how that works and why you choose to do an event like this. Sure, Dave. Um, what the people might not understand is, you know, how can this be legal? Well, it's legal because uh, the proceeds are going to charity. What we have to do is file for a license with the state of Michigan. We have to be a nonprofit organization that's been in existence so many years with officers and bylaws. You, you have to fit the criteria, not just anyone. The state will uh, qualify you first and let you know. We pay the state a small licensing fee to have one of these. They were originally millionaire parties with uh, blackjack and wheels, but uh, poker is so big now, they've added Texas Hold'em tournaments and live games as fundraisers. So we got into this a little over a year ago. This is the fourth one that we've done for the Fraternal Order of Police Lodge 99. I'm actually the second vice president of the lodge, so it was it was a no-brainer for me. I enjoy the cards, and it was an easy way to make some money uh, for the FOP. And what we do is we basically donate the majority of the money we make to other charities. Uh, we've sponsored our canine dog. We've sponsored Special Olympics, My Cops, uh, high school marching bands, Little League um, baseball teams, cheerleading teams, uh, back to school programs, golf outings, Boy Scouts, Girl Scouts, and all that. Well, Brian, the Fraternal Order of Police, uh, that charitable organization, most people hear the word police, and uh, I, you know they would assume, and, and I actually assumed before speaking to you that that, that meant the uh, funds are going toward like police cars and uniforms, uh, you know, things like that. Is that how it works, or is there other things? What what actually does the Fraternal Order of Police do with the funds that they generate? That's a great question. Dave, because we're nonprofit, we all we do is maintain our lodge. We have a lodge up north for meetings. Um, uh, uh, some money goes for support uh, for police stuff uh, uh, on the government level. You know, changing the laws for the better of the police officer, or uh, maybe insurance policies for officers killed in the line of duty. Fraternal Order of Police is, is behind all those, but what we do locally with the majority of our money is we just give it right back to the community. They send in letters requesting donations. It might be a high school hockey team. It might be the Girl Scouts, the Boy Scouts. Of course, tops on our list are like um, Crime Victim Services Unit where they come out if there's a, a tragedy. They come out and help the Sheriff's Department. The K-9 program has asked for donations. Uh, we, we do everything from little leagues on to uh, weightlifters that need money to go to another country. If it's a student athlete from the area, we, we've done all that before. Uh, Special Olympics. Uh, so it sounds like there's a pretty blanketed community uh, goal that you have where you just pretty much give back to the community. It's not, even though it's the Fraternal Order of Police, the, the funds that you raise go back toward anything that hope, helps the, uh, the local environment. That's a great way to put it. You put it better than I did, actually, yeah. It's, uh, we like to help other nonprofits, of course. You know, nobody's out to make uh, the money here. It's, it's to go back in the community and help them fill the void for, for their own fundraising needs, actually. We're, we're just a big fundraiser, and they come looking for a fundraiser from us, and we help them out. So when someone uh, supports the FOP charities or any type of event, they're actually supporting many different causes. Exactly, exactly. I don't know if the footage has been in yet, but we've got a big sign in the back that uh, we've listed some of the charities. I went back over the, the past uh, maybe two and a half years and pulled out from our books uh, which uh, organizations, charitable organizations that, that our lodge personally has made donations to so the players here can see where the money goes. Well, I sure appreciate you having this event and I know that you're a player and you like participating in these events and Hopefully that gives people a better understanding of what the FOP is all about and what the funds for uh, an event like this, what them funds are actually going toward. Well, I'm, I'm glad you appreciate it, Dave, and I'm glad we had the time to tell the people at home how this works, and let's get back to some poker action. That's right. Let's go. Excellent.
Great TV moment here. Scott Hodges has just declared all in in the dark. Now, he knows he's got it, Brian. I think that he's waited a little too long for this move. Absolutely, absolutely. Chad looking, thinking. He wants to win it outright. He calls with an ace nine unsuited. It's probably only 60-40. Scott has a 10-6 unsuited. Sam gives us a flop. And all regardless hearts. of what happens, I think this shows um, Chad's inexperience. And Chad is the winner. A pair of nines on the turn held up. Good job, Scott. Chad Scott needed a 10 or a 7. It was an aggressive play. Chad's aggressive play. Thank you. Pulled off a win there, yeah, first place. You. Congratulations, Thanks. Chad. Thanks. What were you thinking at the end there when you had that huge chip lead and it was heads up between you and Scott? Oh, Scott's a regular up here. You know, he's a he's a good player, and uh, I'm glad I got to play heads up against him. But probably the worst player to play heads up against because you never know what he's going to come up with. You know, he's a he's a good player, and uh, you know the card just fell right today. We were discussing your last move at the end there, and uh, we had wondered if you were willing to put your chips at risk with such a little amount of time left in the tournament. Could you explain your strategy there? Yeah, at that point, you know, we were down to about three or four minutes, and uh, I knew I had him dominated, and uh, I figured I wasn't going to push anything extra than maybe aces or kings or something like that, and then he went all in in the blind. The first card I looked at was the ace, and I knew that, you know, I, I stood a good chance. The point we were making, Chad, was you didn't have to play a hand and you could have won the tournament. But we appreciate your valor in trying to take it out like a man. And he did go all in, so it's going to work out. And, and, and it worked out. The best hand did win, although he probably had about a 40% chance of winning. And with that double up, it would have changed things tremendously. But you were right, only about two minutes to go. And you've played a few of these before, but uh, we congratulate you. And uh, we hope you have success in the main event. Is that what you're going to do with your payday? Absolutely. I'm, I'm going to go sign up right now before it's too late. So. Okay. Great. Right. Thanks, Thanks, up there and good luck in that, too. Yep. Good luck in that. And we'll be talking again in a little while. All right. Thank you. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to go dark next time. No, <laughs> no, you're crazy. Really? <laughs> I live on the edge. Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> and the small blind calls. Let me see if I made a mistake. You can't even push in here. <laughs> yeah, action flop. <laughs> I absolutely blew it. You go all in the sand. Is he out now? Yeah, you should fold. You should fold. He's in now. I get to take money back if I lose. I love it. That's just out. I would have tried to steal. <laughs> now Todd with a chip in the chair still in seven players left he has his chip he's all in in the dark he has no choice he has forced in the big blind to put his chip in Todd is now harassing other players <laughs> he's got to call four forced to call four Randy looks down does he want to gamble he puts it in I know. Thanks, sir. Oh, I hit that. <laughs> I don't think Todd has. Todd has. Have you looked yet? No. Todd has still not looked at his cards. And they're checking it down. And. Whoa! Possibilities. Yeah. <laughs> 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 and Todd.
Todd has tripled up 500 to 1500. <laughs> Todd did not again. make enough money. He is all in again in the dark. He has to win again. How'd you get this far in the tournament if you couldn't Looks read like it? Nice. <laughs> He's all, He's all in, in a small blind. He reads himself perfectly. But this time it'll have 3,000. It'll be all in next time the blinds come around. See if anybody wants to play that same 2 one game. Yeah. He did triple. Yeah. 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 He has a possibility. Ron's Ron Ron making another donation. No good. Randy and Scott says, uh, Todd says all in. <laughs> 45 is at stake for Todd. And it looks like they're going to check it down, which is uh, a – no, he, they already did it. <laughs> and we're going to see – wait, yeah, wait on yours. Uh-oh. Oh, ace-king, two in a row. Check. Queen or straight. Oh, he's got oh, a jack! Oh, he's got it! Ace, a nine or a queen? Ace, nine, or a queen will win it. Oh! oh. And Todd's out. Help me out. Todd, congratulations. You did give us hope for the theory there's a chip in a chair. I was trying to go from worst to first, and uh, I really just had to sit there and fold because if I even would have doubled up with a few chips, I wouldn't have been. I would have still been short stacked the entire time. So that was my game plan, I was just hanging there, helping some other people bust because there was a lot of action before the blind got to me. So I'm just sticking it out. Not how I typically want to play, but at that point, I really didn't have a choice. So. All right. Yeah, I think I uh, criticized you a little bit for some of those suited connectors that you didn't play, but uh, you had a great strategy. How many people do you think went out when you were down below maybe, you know, two. a blind or two. two blinds? I was down to probably uh, maybe two big blinds, and I believe at least two people busted uh, at that point. So, again, that's not how you should play at home, folks. But, uh, <laughs> it worked out for you today? I had to do it at that point. So, but I appreciate the FLP holding this, and this is a great learning ground for anyone who wants to come out. And, uh, learn tournament poker. This is a great place to do it. Great, good job. Hey, Todd. congratulations, we'll Todd. Thank you. Todd will take off. Levi went all in. Dan made a quick call, and Randy made another call. If Levi wins this pot, he'll be right back in contention for the oh. tournament. Randy likes the flop. Nine, you know ten, jack, know, rainbow, all different suits. Dan's advising Randy. He has a killer draw, which probably indicates. A straight draw. Randy flop the nuts. Dan folded, killed Dan's hand. Don't pair the board, I don't think. Set of nines. The board pairs. Levi stays alive. Randy has the nuts right now with the backup club draw. Clubs. Levi is our sixth place finisher. Good job, Levi. Good job, Levi. Good job by Randy making that call. Nice flop. His hand just continued to get better. The blinds are at 3,000 and 6,000 for another five and a half minutes. After that, they go up to 4,000, 8,000. Chips are pretty well distributed. Dave, who's the, who's the chip leader, Dave? Dan's still the chip leader? Two of our future players are still alive, Ron Bielski, Ma Harris, Randy, Eric, and Dan with his lucky clover hat. Randy's in the small blind. Mom's got the pained look. Under the gun, you really need premium hands at this point. She's not that far short stacked where she needs to make a all-in move with any two cards. So she knows that there's one, two, three, four people to act after. She folds. Dan is our chip leader with 86,000 according to Dave. Ron folds. 
Actions back to Eric. He makes a call. Six thousand. Randy be getting five to one on his money right now. If he can count on Dan not raising. Didn't get a chance to see his hand that he's thinking. Eric's six thousand dollar call on the button is what they call a limp. He could have a large hand waiting for someone to make a move and trapping them. Or he could have a couple of suited connectors just wanting to see a cheap flop. Randy throws the 3,000 in, Dan checks. 18,000 in the pot. Sam gives us the flop. Ace, eight, 10. Another rainbow, all different suits. Randy will be first to act. He checks, Dan checks. Eric's gonna make a bet. 10,000 chips into the 18,000 chip pot. Randy quickly calls. Dan gets out of their way. Two hearts on the turn. Makes a gut shot straight draw and a flush possibility. Both of the players in this hand are actually previous winners. Randy's won, I believe, three times, maybe four. And Eric won uh, not too long ago. Kind of new to the circuit, but he's been at a few final tables the past few weeks. He's making his all-in move. 25,000. Randy's measuring it up to see what he'll have left if he loses the hand, and he makes the call. Sam's gonna count it down to make sure there's an accurate amount in the pot. This will probably be our new chip leader. My mistake, Eric was not all in. Aces and deuces, Randy Mux. Ace Jack for one pair of aces. He had him out kicked. Eric caught his basically his three outer. Still five players alive, and that was a big pot. He's definitely in contention. Against Eric and Dan. Ron goes all in, he's the short stack. Ten thousand five hundred. Eric takes a peek beneath his lucky glasses that he borrowed for today's event. Seemed to be working some magic. He's going to make the call, and all in with a call. Randy quickly out of the way. Dan doesn't want to play. Mom has a decision to make. She could just call. She would be getting about six to one on her money, five to one on her money. She can almost make the call with anything. She probably has a big hand. Doesn't know what to do, she makes the call. Ron could triple up plus on this hand. Two players still have chips, Eric and Mom. So we can't just turn the cards over. Ron will have to see what fate deals him. A check and a check. Flop was king, six, seven. Five on the turn, nine of hearts on the river. Check and a check. Eric turns over ace jack. Mom has a queen, two of diamonds. Ron is our fifth place finisher, Ron Bielski. Showing the audience that he still has what it takes and that circuit championship was no fluke. We'll see if we can get an exit interview with Ron. Another good job. Good job today, Ron. Glad we, glad we picked you as one of our feature players. We knew that you'd come through uh, when we picked you out. You came in fifth place. Didn't look like you had a lot of chips. Uh, was there much you could do? Uh, did, did you lay down any hands that maybe you should have played, or did you just do the best you could with what you had? Well, you always think you did the best you could. There were hands that uh, I might have won if I could have seen more cards, but not many. It was uh, the way they ran, and like I said uh, when we were talking earlier, the idea is to get to this final table and get in the money. That's what wins circuit championships. Right, you'll get a slew of points for this, and it's uh, actually a fresh, maybe the second week of this circuit season. Yep. So anybody watching at home can get down here and, and, and jump in, and, and no matter where they finish, they're going to get some points and work towards that circuit goal, which we don't know what the prize is going to be yet, but it's going to be something similar. They've shortened the circuits up a little bit uh, so people can concentrate a little bit more instead of dragging it out. But uh, who, uh, right now, obviously the chip leaders, one or the other, you know, Lou and Randy have good games. Actually, <coughs> all four have been champions before. Um, 
Who would you put your money on? Right now? Uh, I know, I like the way Eric's been playing real well. He's been aggressive when he needed to be, and uh, he's been calling people down. Dan's very good. Oh, all four of them are very good players, including Lou and Randy. Right. So you got an all-in right there. There's an all-in right now. Oh, this is important. 7-8 for Eric. Randy went all in with Pocket Kings, and Eric called because of his huge chip stack. Looking to get lucky. He's pretty dominated, but in, as you can see with all the chips he has left, it isn't really going to hurt him to lose. He actually flops an open end straight draw. A 4 or a 9 will eliminate Randy. Randy's hand lives. Pocket Kings should live. Uh, was an excellent flop for Eric. Well, thanks for your time again. Uh, Ron, and we hope to see you next week and see you at the next final table. You always put on one of the best events. The FOP is great. Did you win anything today from the FOP? Fifth place, that's worth money. The uh, final table people get a World Series of Poker souvenir chip. Hey, thank you very much. You can't see you didn't win this time. See you later. Congratulations, Ron. Thank you. E, you're all in? He's all in. Good luck, bud. Good King luck, Queen. Buddy. He's got an ace. Oh, ace king. Nice. Come on, baby. Hold up. Ace, oh. baby. He got it. E, nice. what's up, baby? Nice hand. <laughs> Good job, E. Stay alive, buddy. Give me some skin. Don't leave me hanging. <laughs> Lou Harris, Brian's mom's all in. Brian, your mom's all in. Looks like Eric's counting his chips. Could they have a possible call? I love you, Lou. Eric calls. This could determine the fate of Lou Harris, Brian's mom. I think I, one of them. I, think I, think I, I know who Brian's hoping for. 28, uh, 20 to you. Uh, tw uh, 8. Original bet was 8. She raised a 28, so it was a $20,000 raise. Eric called. Dan looks down his cards. Looks like he wants to play. Makes a quick call, turns over Ace King. Lou outflops him with aces and jacks. It'll take a king or running diamonds. They should never shake hands ahead of time. No help on the turn. No help on the river. Lou triples up. Good job, Mom. Fighting hard for one of those FOP trophies. Eric had a dominant hand pre-flop. Sometimes it's better to get lucky than uh, be good. I'm going to be dead for another week. Can you, can you call? Yeah, you call, you call pre flop. Oh, so she's got a ton of chips. Yeah, yeah. 68 plus, she had 88. She got 88. 88,000. A lot of respect around the table. We're here with the fourth place finisher, Eric. How are you? Eric, looks like you had a good day today. You were chip leader just uh, some time ago, and I know with the blinds going up, things can change quite a bit, but uh, why don't you tell me what happened in your own words? Uh, um, well, Miss Lou went in with about 26, and I called and had her pretty much dominated, and she caught the queen to uh, pair up, and that was 26 of it. That was a that was big, big hit on your chip stack. And then uh, I was almost at 100, and um, Dave, I believe his name is? Dan. Dan. And uh, hit me for about 50. I had two pair, high pair on the board, and got lucky and caught his uh, straight on me. So. Oh, no. Yeah. Yep. Awesome tournament. Things run well. Glad to be here. Is there uh, anything you would have did different, or you think you played the best you could with the cards you had? Uh, 
the last hand, mm -hmm. I would have probably went and took a nap for a couple minutes. Instead of, <laughs> instead of we never like, yeah, yeah. 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 We, we never like to lose. No, so no, no, congratulations. No. So you got Thank fourth. You, you're gonna get yourself yep. some cash. So Absolutely. good job. Thank you. Yep. Everything's great. Thanks. The uh, blinds are now 5,000, 10,000. Three players left. The average chip stack is 80,000. He's raised 50,000 additional on top of the blind. <coughs> he shows ace queen suited. At, th at this point in the tournament, uh, you're going to see very aggressive play. The blinds are a large percentage of the average chip stack. Uh, when uh, your total chip stack is only eight times the big blind, uh, most pros will tell you to make a move. If you'll notice, uh, due to the time, the time restrictions and the high aggressive play, the more hands players can get in will help help uh, the payout. We have a TV bump. He, he is actually assisting the, the dealer and speeding things up so they can, can players can get more ha hands in. This will allow them to get more play for the time allotted that they, they have. He'll, he'll be shuffling the cards when the, when the dealer is dealing so that the cards are ready, ready to go. We've uh, added, added a, uh, a deck to the play. To play. Use two decks will speed things things up and help the players get more hand. Heba, Heba, shuffling. And Harris is, Harris is all in. You'll see, you'll see a lot of all in play, play at this point. Turn up, turn up. Randy looks down, he looks down at his cards. Dan, Dan throws away one of my favorite, favorite hands. <laughs> <laughs> Lou seems to put the pressure on. Dan and Randy are feeling it. I'm just for guys, poker, poker experience because of who those guys guys put together. Should get some chip chips. Behind there, put in a few good words around, as he should. And we're going to see if you flop. We have a call. Lou is out of the hand. Five, five, five. Five. Nobody has a five, five down. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, 
just, I'll just roll your cards and deal, deal. We'll count, count my after. Got an, got an all in, Dan. Made a, made a move. With the jacket, with the jacket off, suit off, suit. Let me quick call, call. Eight, nine, nine. She does have, does have the lead, but they're all 66640. Three jacks. Oh, my God. Takes out three three jacks. Wow. She does she doesn't know. Lucky she she got she needed run runner runner to put that one off off. She has dance dance cover down to our down to our final player players. Wow. Well, you went in with one with worst ten. Probably had Try and steal, steal exactly. Uh, the poppy, poppy of dream, dream, uh, two jet, two jet. The ten was an eight, and eight would have been all over. That would have been way better. Uh, she, she, she even criticized herself in front of you. What a, what a bad way it was. Was she bitch? Step, step. She got lucky, be lucky because it's not all. Not all was a lot of lucky, lucky ball. I got lucky first. You got lucky. I got very lucky first. She, she did have the best hand. But I got a little consolation prize for you. For you, two hundred and sixty-five bucks today. Today, so surplus. Good job, good job, Dan. I see you at the final table. If you had to uh, do a uh, pick of these two here, I'd be so virtual. Who would you uh, pick uh, to win tournament? tournament? Both great player players, and the chip differential will lose. Okay, okay. Randy will, will, Randy can, can come back. Yeah, yeah. Very easily. Yeah. So, cool. Double ups and the whole thing. Okay, okay. I would, I would yeah, you're big. I'd call it. I just don't know. Take, take down. If you guys want to chop it, but just play out like you're going to be on TV. And Lou got five fives. Randy went all to these, these two. Lou, Lou is actually happy that with five fives. Randy's a hit, he's a hit ace. Possibly, possibly wrap around straight. Yeah, he does, he does. Lou, Lou. Lou. It's possible, it's possible to take down. down. Early and sometimes, sometimes you get a short stack, and uh, it's a stack 
quite that quite, quite often. And, and a lot of these fun, these fun tools, you got you got you got man shift shift for tough. So it's so really it's, it, it feel like uh, maybe maybe the crowd was in front of us a little bit a little bit. <laughs> uh, uh, I, I knew that going in, so I wasn't really worried worried about that. So so uh, I just I just you know, I play my hands, my hands, and I, I want I want her to lay her hands, lay her hands, like she wants to play them, play them, and, and just more than more than that. Well, you do good job. We get played one played one for you today today. We appreciate it. Great great good talk. Congratulations. And here we have Lou Harris, Chris, the FOP, 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 first place champion. champion. You can see the glow in her, glow in her face. <laughs> Brian, since this is your mom, I'm going to give you the honors here. All right, all right. How did you did you feel, feel when when one one flop flop three jacks and, and you did runner 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 win win? Well, well, there helps so, 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 Let me tell you, tell you. I thought sure, thought sure. I felt he had me deep, but, but um, that's part of, part of gambling, and I, and I hit straight on, straight on the end, and I didn't feel, I didn't feel that you're going, you're going with that eight, that eight nine. Even though, even though you had a big, big, good amount of chips, amount of chips, did you feel, you feel, you was a whole steal, whole steal, or you said, hey, hey, my ace is having to beat whatever's got, yeah, yeah. I, I had watched Dan play, and I felt that I had him, him, I had the best hand, best hand, and I was, or when do, or when do, man. <laughs> what does it, uh, trophy actually, actually mean to you? It means me me in the first three first three trophies I won I won. I'm i I'm so happy with this with this. Second and F second and F piece turn piece turn and I and I kinda gave it away the way last night it just means all the all the more to me because I was so hard for hard for it. Okay, well I well, I got some um, uh, bonus for you here. here. First place, five place, five dollars in hand and cash. Thank you very very much and thank you to the F O P they've done they've done some good for for tournaments here here and I love them all. Congratulations. You did you did a great job today today. Alright, we are we have a lot of out of action here at, at table number number two. Uh, um look at three we have three people all in all in. Dan has the both the both covered. It's possible two people are going home. See what happens. See what happens. Eight, 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 ace queen and ace queen and a pair of tens. Bob actually, Bob actually has a lead ten. He has a lead ten. Should ten should in this pot pot. You'd have have. Oh oh. And a king on the flop with the ace ace ahead. Dan Dan could possibly take take two players and a queen queen. If some opportun opportunities. And Dan holds and holds up with ace ace suited. Take take out two two players. I, I believe that could, could put Dan as a chief leader of the entire, the entire tournament. <laughs> We're checking, checking with Chad. Uh, look, looks like the. Uh, uh, <laughs> Looks like, looks like we're down to crucial, crucial decision time for Chad, for Chad here. Where's he, where's he, uh, uh, lucky little astronaut, astronaut man, hold on, hold on under the pressure. Oh, we have a raise, he's to 3200. The blinds are, blinds are 4 and, four and 8. It's four, four times the big blind. blind. The raise is it all, all in from first player player. We have a caller, have a caller. Chat chat has yet to act. act. We have another caller caller. And and chat folds, folds. We are gonna see the see the fop. We have a lot of, have a lot of action in this hand, this hand. She hit, she hit king, goes ahead, goes ahead. Long, long the ace doesn't come, doesn't come. She, she dodges the ace, ace. She gets all, she gets all. She eliminates, she eliminates two players. Here. In Chaz's Ch Ch last hand, we've seen, we've seen two players knocked, knocked out. The Kermit, the Kermit Racker has filled, has filled in spots, spots and br brought some more players, players over. Just to, just to make sure we have an even, play, even playing field on all the, ta all the tables. And Chad is now going to have to put out, have to put out 400. 400 is approximately 25 percent of of an entire chip stack. Chip stack. Um, quite, quite frankly, there's n there's not many hands. hands Chad could fold and fold in this position. Uh, he, has, he has seemed to be playing playing tight, and we're not sure, sure what he's waiting for. For but we'll find find what happens here. Here. And Chad, Chad has a rather has a rather obvious 
this disgusted look on his kind of face. We're not, we're not sure what he's sure what he's gonna do. do. He, mu he must have a very low, very low rank in order, in order to throw that way. That way. Although, he, although he will be able to look at, look at fear for free, free hand without putting out putting money. In. He choose to pick his spot, his spot. Your time, your time. We're, we're gonna see the flop. flop. Five, six, back, back. Big blind, big blind folds. Shows, shows top hair. No, no more than likely, likely. <coughs> Chad, Chad standard Turner tournament play. Well, uh, uh, he will have, will have to go all in before, before we get to the big lines. Lines within the next four, four or five hands. We'll see, we'll see if he survives. Survives, doubles up, doubles up, and you and you see side side relief, and it's my smile. There we go. <laughs> we bought, we bought uh, eight, more, eight more players down to one to twenty six chips to last away, but it looks like it looks like desperation time for the man. Sixteen hundred chips, and at, an average deck now is always over nine thousand. Brian, I think safe to say to say that the few the few is left, and the time is running out. It's running out. Yeah, yeah. This man made mad made move with just like just like two cards, cards. I had next next ace and that can't can't get maybe a couple student couple student interest. Or to pick or to picture cards, money money will be going at the hot spot. We we sure also it's always a shoot on straight to straight to having all he needs he needs to have that little hand little hand had to him up him up. So like you read like you read in our mind mind. The the astronaut standing standing on end. We haven't seen this maneuver, maneuver yet, Brian. And yeah, yeah, it's uh, pretty much, pretty much. Yeah, yeah. I've seen that, I've seen that a lot of card games, the games. The old has that, has that finishing guy, guy, trying, trying to drum up a little, little luck. He's got, uh, uh, this will be a good, be a good time for him, time for him to pick up hand, hand. Let's see. Big, big, big. And he's his card, his cards. Take, take some breath. Cue the Jeopardy, Jeopardy music. He calls, he calls, he's on it. Chance to look to look at card and he's got and he's got a piece of the loose off. They can't they can't flip it so because so, the other two player players, Andy and Sean, have me. They go back to the back to the out. They won't know stay to stay till they turn their cards their cards over. Obviously he's he's looking for something something on top. Ten nine nine I I no help yet help yet. Two other players check down check down. Twin club clubs on the river. Turn turn. And flip flip over their cards. There's a straight eight pair of eights. And Chad and Chad must hand. We do know we do know the ace high high. A chance to win. Even tough tough. A chance to uh, to uh, get further into further in tournament. 
but he's man down. Man down. I hate to see it happen. happen. Chen. Look like it's like it's all again there, Bob. There, Bob. I've been on A since since the beginning of the year. Yeah, you know, the ranks have been gone for all all along now now and uh, I saw I saw I went with I had a chance to pull up. I just went with the best card cards that I had. No, I think I think you right play. I play. Uh, no other player had a player had an ace, so you actually you actually had one player. You were you were out of one player, one player, and you definitely had definitely had a chance to beat the other other player. Control down, control down. Four couple weeks, couple weeks, hey. But I think but I think you played the hang off. Thank thank you. Thank you. Hold it, hold it. I don't have time. Time. We have a guy. The guy we need to 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 slow for looking here. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yep. Yep. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I do, do, um, I do, do, I do this, do this. Pretty, pretty fun, I think, I can do, I can do it every time, time, it's going to be bad, 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 yeah, because this is, because this is, this is, this is, Have hard, have hard time scrolling that one now. Do it all day long, long. Can't do it with camera, camera. Hey, Dave, Dave, Dave. 
That's how we that's how we dress. See how everyone's, how everyone's doing. Run, run. 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 Looks like have just have just cheap average. Yes. Still hanging there doing good. Doing good. How are you feeling about the tournament? I feel I feel really good about it because I spend the money, but I want that that trophy for myself. So I'm gonna fight down, fight down. So maybe this one for Brian. Yeah, yeah. All right, well good, well good, well, good luck though. Yeah, yeah. Good luck, good luck, good luck. 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 Good
Any falls. Would have been down, down in the street, street, nine against, against East at, at, will help, help on the lot. There is nine, nine, no nine. Has, has him covered. Play, player down. Player down, down, nine players. Nine players. Nine players. Nine players. Nine players. That me that means that uh Lou Lou and and Eric and Ron, Ron everyone's just moving, moving every every single swing swain right now will get will get paid. They are all in, in the money. So see, see how this turns out. One five hundred dollars large ship at this point. Be hard for him to, be hard for him to do anything. Do anything. Average ship, ship back. Average, average ship stack. Twenty-seven. Twenty-seven thousand. That's five. That's five hundred. Players all, all in. Five players, five players, action still, still to go. It's gonna be, it's gonna be an action. Pop, pop. King three, king three, two, two parts, parts. Three and a three and a ten king. In your car, car door. Ace, ace, king, ace, king, ace, ace, queen. Wow, that's amazing, Dave. Dave. few questions about uh, what they do and service they, they supply. They're actually a, a licensed gaming supplier, buyer, licensed to the station, and always regular, and regular, and so with my, so with my, my, how do you guys, my, how do you guys get started in this, in this? Well, kind of we were, kind of we were just a uh, poker, uh, poker player the first week, first week, uh, met, and uh, people said, people said, one of the better, better home games in town and stuff like that, and we want to take it to, take it to a larger sale, that's what we that's what we can coming up, coming up, coming up, this is game, this is game. Great. And you talk, you're just playing for, playing for, just monetary yeah, value exactly, there, right there, right? Exactly. Exactly. 
Uh, uh, Shannon, do you know my own mic before you got this? Uh, he said, 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 he Andy, and Andy, and Andy tells, Andy tells how difficult, difficult it is to be a licensed, licensed gaming supplier, higher state emissions, to do background checks, checks, to go to the JP, to the JP, or just a business, or just a business license, license. Uh, it, it, it's pretty intense, actually, actually. I mean, there's a lot of, of uh, dominant stuff like that, the underbacker, the underbacker, the fingerprints, all that good, that good stuff. So, uh, 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 um, um, uh, more, 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 more detail, detail, so that we thought we'd get into it. Did you, did you actually run as, on as a business first first poker tournament tournament, Shannon? Uh, uh, that would be twenty first two first two thousand five at the, the uh, charity lodge, uh, charity lodge up in up in North Skigan. That was that was our first event. Uh, um, How many people did did you have that event? Uh, if I can rem I can remember, it was it was was, tw was twenty one in the first game. First game, yeah, so. twenty one in the first game, nine, nine in the second, nine in nine in third. Sounds like one's like one big family is all that's all that was. Um, Besides Great, Great Lakes Down, who, who are also our sponsor, sponsor tonight, is there, is there other venues you, you've had? I heard you say that. I heard you say that. What sort of venues you've had these? You've had these at? Uh, we've, had, we've had a couple different lodges. lodges uh, what I meant, what I meant, uh, the Eagles, Eagles Grand Haven. We've had it uh, at the barn, a uh, nice restaurant south of the uh, Grand Haven there. there. Um, El El Tree Lodge. We've, we've talked about Dreamer, Dreamers. Uh, nice lodge. Nice 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 yep, yep. Polish uh, Union. Uh, Polish Union. Union. Exactly. I might bet one, one, two. Difficult, difficult. The lodges, the lodges are pulling event, event because they have the public, public, public lights and stuff for the event. Uh, event uh, uh, but, uh, places like that, they already have a stable list of liquor licenses. Sure. So sure. Easy to have the event. Have the event. And, and how did you come up with this idea, with this idea to have to have these? Like, how did partnership, uh, partnership uh, again, again? Uh, it was kind of kind of fun. Uh, and uh, we were at the uh, we were at the charity charity lodge. It was, in, it was in November, early November, early November. And there's and there's a lightning going on and not not that loud. We were we were in the middle of the uh, middle of the uh, I think I think the second game. And it felt, and it felt the only their best one, their best one to play. So so Mike here went 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 out to so grab some home hands, some home hands. And, and in the meantime, meantime he was out grabbing lanterns, grabbing lanterns, flashlights, flashlights. And some of the other players, some of the other players had grabbed grabbed flashlights and, and some some, uh, some uh, minor 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 lights. Put them on heads on heads and uh, and uh, we started playing and playing and we finished that that game and we started the third third game. And about two, and about two minutes after after the uh, power had or after passed over, over the power back on back on. And and they might not, might not say we want to get the paper, get the paper, the store, the store, the paper, paper in the store. And uh, we got a call, call from the manager, manager, manager uh, Bob Williams. That breaks down, breaks down. And that's how, that's how the, uh, that's how the. Let's look, 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 let's look,
different styles, but uh, but uh, yeah, I think we're, I think we're both good, good players. Okay, I think I think you. But be, before we get out of here and there, and I thank you for your time and I time and I thank you for your support support the show that we're trying to go we're trying to go. And Shannon, Shannon, uh, most, most recently, what would be, what would your worst worst Abby Abby story be? be uh, if 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 if, if it caused any reflection that maybe that maybe I was involved involved because all the home home houses and and came down in a poker in a poker tournament. Oh oh oh, that, 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 this comes right right up to right up to the, right up to the top. I think it was in hand it was in hand. I had a case. Uh, someone, someone, someone raised in front of me. This is called called middle position. position. Uh, Spider Bunny, Bunny. Just hold, just hold. Their name was, their name was. Uh, can I, can I, can I get names out? Sure, sure. Uh, yeah, Brian Harris, Harris. I don't know who that is? That is. Oh, oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah. I had, uh, I had uh, King, King, Queen of Spain, of Spades, or something like that. Like that. Yeah, just refresh, refresh. Yeah. And what, and what was the flop? The flop comes out, comes out. Eight. eight, eight. Can you, you mean you flop four, flop four, eight? Flop quads, quads. Imagine that. Imagine, imagine that feeling. Wow. And and, and, and instead of instead of just going all in, in he folding. I, I, I actually flop king, kings at eight. He decided, he decided to kind of you know, smooth all up. There, there was actually a third character and he bet. And yeah. how did you and he and he bet? You called and called and I called. I felt felt really good. He bet. I called. You call. I still felt good. Though, but I figured one of you guys had you guys had the king. I had the eight side. So I'm not. So I'm not gonna scare anybody. Wait, wait. I figured if I figured if I two pair, two pair. Let you hang around a little bit longer, a little bit longer. And 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 what was what was the turn? Turn, the turn was turn was yet another another king. Well, that gave me king me king soul base. So while you had base, right, base, right. And I believe I believe the other person was able another bet, didn't he? Didn't he? You come another, another bet. I I once in saw saw fearing that some that somebody had to boat the boat, and if I went all in, all in, they're gonna call call. If they do hit, come out of the time out of the turn. So you're still pretty still pretty in the tournament. I want, I want to give myself so a little either. I didn't want to I didn't want to put on my my risk. When they're, when they're still that one, one out left, left. And I, I had to say, I had to say, I felt pretty good. I good. I assume Jan had something like pocket to pocket aces. He was so so and made an ace and ace seat suited flat flat the ace. And I just made I just made kings full of full ace. The only hand that was the hand that was gonna pretty, pretty much beat me was was gonna be face race. And the way he played it, he played it. There's a put on it, put on it. But but alas, what was the river? River river was my worst worst nightmare. Another another king king. Imagine that the case the case king. So you're, so you're saying I had four kings four kings. When you had four you had four eight. That's that's right. That was my worst bad worst bad beat. And there was, and there was a check check. I think I bet bet. And then there was a, there was a raise. I, I do believe I laid it laid it down. That's your story to <laughs> tell the way you want you want. It was it was actually a check check and you check check because you knew some of the king the king quickly one king one king and be check be check. And I and I did a little smooth a smooth. I bet, I bet about 30, 30, 000, The pot was probably probably under already already. And you said I have to call. call. I've got four uh, four eight. <laughs> and I took the pot away. Pot away. Was that uh, what, uh, what was that feeling? Because I was I was feeling pretty darn good. Darn good. I just add, just add it to the long long list of beds and mites and my words for for. That's just that's just that's just how it goes for goes for me. And and actually I'm only I'm only on computer on computer. Uh, uh, and I believe after the after the flop I had a. a Zero zero point zero two percent two percent chance of winning so winning the hand. The only the only way could win it was the was the remaining two kings and, and it came through. So, uh, obviously, really one of my one of my one of my most uh, adva advanced play that made that made an important career career. And what happened to Nusser? Happened to Nusser Gay? It's not that uh that uh who shot who shot for first? Uh, I think uh, I think you were involved. Yeah, involved. Yes. So so and you were involved. And I was involved. So I got I got a little bit of uh, of uh, poker luck luck that goes along with a little my little, little my poker skill. Uh, we appreciate your guys, your guys are doing a fine job, a fine job out here. Everybody does, does nothing problems. You're so you're so profound with your equipment, your equipment. Uh, uh, the way uh, you get you get the chairs started, started, you know, let them let them need to be done, done. Get our top, our top notch. The the cards, uh, the uh, training guy, one guy, one give out training, out training, and uh, and uh, it's well set up, well set up, well timed, and you're doing a fine job. I think it's going to be nothing but nothing but uh, hot, hot charities and successful success tournaments out here. That's out here for your thanks for your for your time. Thank you. Thank you.